Hi YouTube, this is Patrick, and this is my review for two Steven Spielberg films that were released right around Christmas, uh, The Adventures of Tintin and War Horse. Uh, I saw Tintin a little while ago, I just recently saw War Horse. Um, so I'll do Tintin, Tintin first. It's the animated film based on the um, a comic book series, uh, a Belgian comic book series from, uh, I believe his name is Herge, or Herge? I, I don't, I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, this was not an action film, it was an adventure movie, that's one thing you gotta know going into it. Um, so it's less Indiana Jones than you think, it's got a little bit of Indiana Jones in it, but not as much um, as maybe like intended. People were comparing it to like Raiders of the Lost Ark. It, to some degree there's some scenes that might remind you of it, but this wasn't an action movie, this is more a detective on like the hunt. Um, you know, you get these, like, um, backstory, uh, scenes. There's a couple action scenes. There's one fantastic action sequence. Um, you know, the, the, there's an ending action sequence and all that. Um, but, uh, it, it's just, it's just not an action movie. I think that's something that can be, um, uh, misrepresented, or has been misrepresented a little bit. Uh, so going into it, you might be expecting, um a lot of that, and I just don't think there was, there really was a lot of it. And I've heard complaints that the movie was all, you know, uh, set piece and no story. Set piece, yeah, but set piece doesn't mean just like wall-to-wall -wall action. It's, um, uh, it's just that. It's just a set piece. Like, a, you know, particularly maybe a breakout of somewhere. It's more fun. It's still fun. Um, uh, but that's the one problem with the movie that I had, I'll get through my problem of it first, was that it kind of, um, and this was a little problem with War Horse too, it kind of walks the line a little bit of being, doesn't quite know, um, if it's a kid's movie or if it's a little bit more than that. Um, it, for the most part it walks that line, line very well, as does War Horse, um, but, uh, there's still, like, instances where it's just kind of, you know, you'll be watching something and it's like something that, like, the Snowy the dog does, who... I love, by the way. Um, we'll do something really funny, or just the way Tintin will yell, you know, great snakes, or something like that. It just feels very childlike, and then, you know, he'll shoot somebody. Uh, um, or you'll get this long, drawn-out, you know, speech about a treasure. Um, but yeah, but that was really probably... It's my complaint about the movie. It's what I would, you know, make the... You know, knock the movie down a little bit. But everything else just really was well done. Um, the motion capture stuff, the, it, this isn't, you know, uh, A Christmas Carol or Polar Express or Beowulf or anything like that. This was much, much better. Uh, probably because it's Weta, not Industrial Light and Magic. Uh, Peter Jackson's company that did, um, Avatar. Peter Jackson was one of the producers. Um, performances are really good. Tintin's a little bland. Uh, Jamie Bell's fine, but the main character's a little bland. It's kind of weird when your weakest, uh, character is your main character. Uh, Andy Serkis does a great job with, with Haddock. He's, you know, fantastic at this stuff. It almost shows that he's, like, the pro here. Uh, Daniel Craig was getting a lot of flack for his role, which I didn't really get, because I thought he was really, really good as the, uh, the film's villain. Um, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, who I love, were a little wasted. They were really barely in it, and they have a whole subplot that it really doesn't do anything. It's probably really not needed. Um... Uh, it's basically a subplot that, for very, very odd reasons, gets him to eventually interact with Tintin later on in the movie, and I just, and it doesn't really work. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, the story was fine. As I understand, it was a mix of three separate, uh, stories from the, the, the books. So, um, it was fine. It wasn't anything spectacular. It was a little uneven. Um... But uh, that's not really what I took away from the movie. I was hoping to get, like, a fun, you know, fun adventure film with some good action scenes and stuff like that. And I just, you know, uh, some real, um, I kind of wanted to see what Spielberg would do with, uh, you know, the motion capture and just having complete free range. Um, and he, that, in that respect, he didn't disappoint at all, especially there's a one take action sequence. Uh, most directors, they do a one take 
you know, someone like Paul Thomas Anderson, who I love, but when he does a one long, really one long take, it's almost like he's showing off, like, look how talented I am. Um, Steve does a lot of long takes in his movies where you don't realize that it's a long take. There's stuff on, like, the Omaha Beach landing in Private Ryan. There's stuff even in Catch Me If You Can. Uh, and pretty much all of his movies where you maybe you'll be watching the scene and before you know it, you realize that, hey, there's a, you know, this scene hasn't cut yet and it's been, like, over a minute. Um, so he's always done that, but this time he finally got to show off with one long take as he doesn't, he does an entire action scene in one take. It's about three and a half minutes, and, um, I mean, it's just, you know, beautifully done. Of course, it's probably, I mean, the animation really helps that it's not most likely all done in one take on, like, the soundstage, uh, with the actors, you know, at the first time. I, I doubt it. I like to see how they would do it on, like, the, the Blu-ray extras or something like that, but, uh. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. Uh, like, that was spectacular, and I got... That was enough out of the movie for me to really, really enjoy it. Um, I want to see what Peter Jackson's going to do with the next one. Uh, I think they could improve on it a little bit. You know, take the criticisms of this one and improve. Um, so I'll give it a, a B. Um, which I guess is a little disappointing because it's Spielberg, but... Um, Considering I really had no interest in something Tintin, the only attraction to the movie that I had was that it was, uh, you know, Spielberg directing it. Um, but, uh, yeah. So a B for Tintin. Uh, and then War Horse. War Horse was something that I was looking forward to much more than Tintin um, throughout the year. Um, I hadn't seen the play. I read the book. Um, and I thought it fit Spielberg's... Um, you know, it fit him perfectly. He pretty much wears his heart on his sleeve in his movies, and he gets he gets a lot of flack for it, which I don't get, because he knows that he's sentimental. He's even said in interviews that it's he hears criticism about about him being sentimental, as if people aren't aware that he's trying to be. Um, and uh, you know, so what if if you know. John Williams, you know, score, like, you know, goes crazy and we're supposed to get, you know, tears ripped out of us. You know, that's what music in any movie is supposed to do, not just Steve's movies, so. Uh, but anyway, War Horse um, is something that I want to see again. Uh, it's something that I will buy. Um, it wasn't perfect. Uh, it's got too much, too long of a middle stretch in the movie. Um, that kind of weighs it down a bit. Uh, it was nice that it was mostly about the horse, basically. Um, although it feels like the horse felt like more like a dog in the movie than than a horse. Some sometimes they make even a couple of jokes like that that it's a dog or whatever. But uh, but still, um, the movie's got complaints at the first half hour of it is just really really cheesy and I almost felt that it was just really really old fashioned I almost felt like I was watching bits and pieces of The Quiet Man which is a John Wayne film my favorite John Wayne movie um so if you like it, I think and it, it John John Ford I believe directed The Quiet Man and, uh, and a lot of John Wayne westerns The Searchers and everything and there's a lot of shots that really um are like homages to him um especially the movie's ending um, but still, that's how I felt the first half hour of the movie was, and I didn't mind it at all. In fact, I was really, really thrilled that I was enjoying this first half hour because all I heard was that that was the weakest part of the movie. Um, but then we went in, we, we went into what I thought was the weakest part of the movie, and where everyone said the movie picked up, um, where it's basically a bunch of vignettes where the horse gets taken from you know the the boy Albert, and he goes to a series of people. First one is Tom Hiddleston and and, and Benedict um, Cumberbatch. Um, it's a great name, by the way. Uh, by the way, he's playing um, Smog in The Hobbit, The Dragon, um, and uh, he also just got cast as the villain in the next Star Trek movie. So he's going to be one to watch. Not Hiddleston. Hiddleston, you know, is Loki and everything. Um, but anyway, uh, there's that vignette, and then we move on to like uh, I'm not really spoiling anything. You move on to, like, two 
young German sh- soldiers, and then a f- an old Frenchman and his you know sick granddaughter, um, and so on and so forth. And these like the, that segment right there kind of brought the movie down for me a little bit, um, where I was kind of waiting for it to pick up, where you know, so I got you got to get drop the movie down a few points um, for that. Uh, but uh, then with about an hour to go in it. Uh, I realized that everyone had said this movie was like a big like tearjerker, and about an hour and, and a half in, I'm sitting there going like, you know, nothing really got me yet. And there was a couple of times where they tried, but I was like, it didn't didn't work, didn't happen, and I was a little disappointed. Um, but the last hour of the movie had a couple of moments that were uh, that definitely got me choked up, and I'm 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 easy to choke up, not easy to to get you know actually cry, which I didn't, but I, I choked up about. Uh, about, I don't know, maybe, maybe three times, definitely twice, maybe three, I don't know, um, but that's still impressive, uh, for that to do that to me, um, in fact, this movie actually very much reminded me of when I, of the Hugo movie, Martin Scorsese's movie that's out now, where, like, the last hour of the movie took it from a good movie to very good, um, very, very similar. Uh, and yes, it's overly sentimental. Yes, you know, the cinematography and John Williams, you know, know exactly what they're doing. Yeah, 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 Zeus Kaminsky, I think, is the cinematographer. Who gets some criticism for basically taking Steve's love for backlighting to a whole new level. Um, but I thought he actually held back here and he just created some really, really beautiful shots. And John Williams is just fantastic. John Williams. Uh, and Kaminsky should both both be winning uh, Oscars next year. They probably should be the only things the movie should win for an Oscar for, um, as far as anything else I've seen this year. But those two definitely, it, it really was great. Um, some of the war battles, Steve can still shoot a war uh, war sequence, although it feels like a little bit like Saving Private Ryan, like light, because uh, there's less blood and everything like that. But it was still well done, uh, and he did some creative stuff with the camera. Uh, some very simple stuff, you know, riders on horses, then it cuts to horses without riders, you know, basically indicating what happened to the riders. Uh, so it's well done with stuff like that. Uh, Steve's pretty much at the top of his game with stuff, uh, with that stuff. Um, you know, I heard uh, more criticisms about the movie that he shouldn't be making stuff like this, you know, because it's stuff he could make in his sleep. He should be, you know, challenging himself, which I think is bullshit. Um... You know, he saw the play, he loved the play, he wanted to make the movie. That's why he made the movie. Um, you know, so what if he's making stuff that he can knock out of the park, you know, in his sleep? That means it'll be a good movie. Why wouldn't anyone want to see a good movie? Uh, just like David Fincher with The uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which I haven't seen yet, but it's another Fincher movie, you know, another serial killer. Um, obviously, you know, it's a different story than stuff like Seven and everything, and, um, you know, Zodiac, but who ca- if it's good, who cares? I really don't get that. I hate that criticism. It's so idiotic. Um, but War Horse will not be for you if you don't like sentimental stuff. Um, you'll probably like find it disgusting. Um, but, you know, I think that stuff's great. I think I love the fact that I can sit and watch a movie like War Horse if I decide to one day, and if I feel like watching something completely different, I can watch, you know, a Fincher movie or, so, or Aronofsky movie or something. Um, but, yeah. All right, maybe a little off tangent on that one. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's it. Um, oh, all right. So I'll give Warhorse a, a B plus, uh, with the possibility to get better. Maybe to an A minus, maybe, but uh, it won't go lower than a B plus. Um, so I recommend both movies, but with, um, you know. Don't go see Tintin if you're thinking you're going to get wall-to-wall, you know, video game action. Uh, and don't go see Warhorse if you, A, don't like sentiment, you know, anything sentimental, or B, don't like seeing horses die. Um, and that's not a spoiler, you know, as far as the main character goes or not. Because um, uh, plenty of horses do die in the movie. Uh, yeah, that's it. Um, okay. Let me know what you thought. Adios, guys.